This is the Nightwolf howling at you. And today we're going to visit with the masters of the WWE universe, China, ninth wonder of WWE Turnia. However, on the back of the package, which we haven't gotten to yet, it does say she comes from WWE Theria, so she should probably be the ninth wonder of WWE Theria instead. This is part of the last wave of the Masters of the WWE Universe. On the back, we got a nice picture showing her fighting against Macho Man Randy Savage Horde Edition. Don't treat her like a woman, don't treat her like a man, because this Princess of Power traveled from WWE Theria to WWE Eternia to be the last superstar standing. And it shows her with the Battle Axe of Beautification, which is actually just the axe comb that came with the classics versions of the She-Ra characters. As this was the last wave, they actually only had three figures in it. And since I think these come in cases of four, I'm kind of wondering who had the duplicate. We have Steve Cold Steve Austin, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Unpredictable Bionic Rattlesnake, China, Ninth Wonder of WWE Eternia, and Rey Mysterio, the Heroic High Flyer. And that's actually Rey Mysterio's second figure in this line. And the first figure pretty much looks the same except for a different outfit. So in what is an annoying move, they got rid of the mini comic. That's kind of crap. Seriously, it was the last wave. You guys couldn't have like just gone ahead and done more of it. So on the front of the little information sheet, I guess we'll call it now, we do show China fighting against or fighting with, hard to tell actually. Macho Man Randy Savage, we've got The Undertaker back there, and Savage looks like he's holding a, an urn that would hold Ashes of the Dead. On the back, China, Ninth Wonder of WWE Theory. What the hell? Ninth Wonder of WWE Eternia, Ninth Wonder of WWE Theory. Apparently their copy editors couldn't get the name correct. All right, anyway. China, ninth wonder of WWE Theria. The great battle has begun. A darkness threatens to consume WWE Ternia as the faction of evil superstars rise from parts unknown to control the balance of power. But the heroic superstars accept the challenge to defend the planet and determine who are the masters of WWE Universe. Height, 5 foot 10 inches. Superstar Powers, Beauty and Brawn, Foreign Objects, Princess Power Crown, Battle Axe of Beautification. I am super disappointed that we don't have a mini comic to go with this. I'm also kind of ticked off that this was glued to the freaking cardboard too. And this is copyrighted for 2021. So that was the last year of WW Masters of the WWE Universe. Which is sad, because I would have liked to have seen more characters made in this. China, born Joan Marie Lawyer. December 27th, 1969 through April 17th, 2016. She was a American professional wrestler, fitness model, bodybuilder, author, actress, adult actress, and television personality. She first rose to prominence in the World Wrestling Federation, the WWF, and now the World Wrestling Entertainment, the WWE, in 2097, where she was billed as the ninth wonder of the world. Andre the Giant was already billed as the 8th. 
She was a founding member of the stable D Generation X as the promotion's first female enforcer. She held the WWF Intercontinental Tap Teamship, the only female performer to, to do so twice, and the WWF's Women's Championship once. She was also the first woman to participate in the Royal Rumble match and the King of the Ring tournament in addition to becoming the number one contender with the WWF Championship. She is considered one of the biggest stars of the Attitude Era, with single victories over several prominent male wrestlers, including multiple-time world champions Triple H, Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho, and Jeffrey Jarrett. She left what the WWE called a lasting legacy as the most dominant female competitor of all time. After leaving the WWF in 2001, she wrestled sporadically with the New Japan Pro Wrestling in 2022 and a Total Nonstop Action Wrestling in 2011. The later was her final appearance in the ring. She met performers Triple H and Shawn Michaels after a professional wrestling show in 1996. After watching tapes of her matches, they decided to bring her into the WWF as a bodyguard. Vince McMahon, owner of the WWF, initially did not want her to join the company because he did not believe the audience would find a woman beating up men believable. While waiting for the WWF's decision, uh, China was approached by the World Championship Wrestling, who wanted her to be the sole female member of the New World Order. She initially accepted the offer, but later turned it down when Sean McMahon, Vince McMahon's son, informed her that she was about to be hired by the WWF. However, Kowalski said that he got Laura hired by the WWF after introducing her to Sean McMahon and telling him of the WCW's interest in her. In a subject I never thought I would talk about, uh, China had breast implants that were custom made for her after her first implants were ruptured during a wrestling match. She also complained that to her plastic surgeon that their largest implants did not suit her frame as she desired. The custom implants became the model for the China 2000s, now marketed to large framed women and female bodybuilders. It said she also paid 6000 for them. And that actually kind of makes sense because from what I understand, when female bodybuilders really start building up their chest, their breasts tend to be lost in them a bit and they will get implants in there to keep their feminine form. Uh, her brain was donated to science to study the effects of chronic traumatic enthrophil Failopathy, CTE. However, the brain had naturally decomposed to the point where it could not be definitively determined whether she had CTE or not. Which seems kind of weird because how long did it take them to start studying it that the brain was decomposed too much by the time they started studying it? Anyway, let's move on. So let's go ahead and go over the articulation here, or take a quick look at her first. The crown itself, I'm not sure if this is actually, let's see. It does come off. Okay. So her crown does, in fact, come off. I'm kind of surprised it's not designed more like Shira's. So I wonder uh, if they plan on doing like the cartoon Shira and have something like the similar. But let's go ahead and take that off for now. Take a good look at her face sculpt. Face is done well. Um, she's got a big smile. Like a lot of times, let's be honest, when they do these smiles on these figures, they have this tendency of not looking particularly good, but they did a really good job on her face sculpt. Uh, she looks absolutely beautiful. Lipstick looks like it's supposed to be in a kind of purplish red to go along with her outfit. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the articulation here. Um, she ha her head is on a ball joint. However, the long hair on the front and back do hinder articulation. I mean, you can get it around, but it's not easy. She's got the standard up, down, and spin around on her arms that we see with the Origins line. What's interesting to note is that she's actually got these bands that are, you know, they're just, they're separate parts from the rest of her, which 
I, they must have put those on before they actually put the elbows in place because I can't, I don't think they're going to come over stuff, you know? Anyway, so that is a separate piece. She's got the up, down, elbow. I Did they redo elbows at some point? Because I don't remember them being able to bend back that far. Huh. Anyway. She's not double jointed. She doesn't have double joints, but she does look like she's double jointed. <laughs> anyway, so we've got the hinge that does a ridiculously large mount there. I'm going to have to double check some of the earlier female figures. Um, she's got the spin on her wrist and her hand has the in and out uh, hinge. She's got a nice waist swivel going on here. And I don't know, hold on, uh, I don't know if this is a paint issue, like if they actually, if this is actually a, supposed to be like that, or if they just missed the spot when they painted. Um, her legs can kick back yay far, which is pretty good. Kick forward yay far, which is also pretty good. I think she actually might have better uh, kick range than Tila does. And we can kick up and out like that. So she is definitely going to be able to kick some ass. We have the knee that has the roughly 90 degree articulation. And there is a boot cut, even though her boots do go higher than the joint, which is cool. I actually like when they do that. We've got a hinge at the foot and the peg so it can spin around. Now we can fit her crown back in place on her head, like so, and take a quick look at her accessories. Maybe. Huh. So she actually comes with a plastic cape with some paint on it. Um, I'm kind of surprised. I thought they would have just reused Shira's cape since they reused her body. <laughs> hmm. Um, the cape. Doesn't necessarily interfere with articulation, but it doesn't help it any. Still spin the head around like the same as before. The cape doesn't look too bad, but I'm not a fan of the rubber capes. And whoops, she can hold her axe comb like so. For a more direct comparison, though, I do have the She-Ra Princess of Power figure from the Origins line. They do come with different weapons, obviously. So they have the same torso. Obviously, hers is painted differently. Same arms. Which, actually, I think these are the same bands used on Tila also. So yeah, they have the same forearm as Tila. No, oh, we're at this. Let's just take a quick look. Huh. I guess you can put all their arms all the way back. So anyway. The boots are the same. Head sculpts are obviously different. Um, let's go ahead and take a look here. Hmm. I thought the belt was supposed to come off of her. Dang. I guess they glued the belt on the Shira figure. I thought it was a separate piece, though. So I guess we can't really take a look at to see if it's the same waist part here. 
So that's kind of questionable, actually. You know, this may be the first time I've actually really paid much attention to the She-Ra figure because I didn't realize that the skirt actually went all around either. Huh. Of course, She-Ra has the cloth cape uh, to China's rubber one. And of course, She-Ra's tiara is totally different. So... Overall, actually, I will say, I think uh, I think the China figure is actually beautifully done. Uh, but then again, I think the they've all done a lot of really good face sculpts on the female characters for the WWE Tarnia, which is why it's a shame that they really didn't do more of them in the line. Because I definitely wanted to see more, uh, especially I don't know a lot of I don't know a lot of the, the wrestlers. But I've seen the figures in the stores, and I always wanted to see uh, a, a WWE Tarnia version of Asuka. Anyway, we will go ahead and uh, put her to battle against She-Ra, since only the Princess of Power should go up against the Princess of Power. So, let's take a look at how they do. And now, for the battle you have all been waiting for! China, Princess of Power from WWE Etheria versus Shira, Princess of Power from Etheria. Go on a head to head match and see who is the greatest princess of them all. And China wins in the first match, knocking Shira way the hell out of the ring. And our second match is a draw. That is kind of a little bit of awesome. Not gonna lie. China's hair got caught in the ring. Anyway, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace and love.